I'm Charlie Satgast with Family History Hero, and today I'm going to share a fast and easy way you can deal with your slides and negatives. Slides and negatives are a bit more challenging to scan than using a flatbed scanner for paper photos, and they can get expensive to outsource to professional scanning companies if you have very many of them. That's the main reason inexpensive conversion devices built as slide scanners have become more popular in recent years. It's worth pointing out that these devices are actually converters, they're not scanners. Genuine scanners have a special optical sensor that moves across a photo slide or negative and progressively digitizes the image. Slide converters work differently. They contain a small digital camera that takes a photo of a backlit slide or negative. Even if the integrated camera in an inexpensive slide and negative converter has a fairly high megapixel rating, it's just not going to do as good a job capturing the image as a high quality flatbed scanner can. There are quite a few of these slide and negative converters available these days, and we can't test all of them, but hopefully this quick review will help you understand the difference between a good one and a poor one and give you a basis of comparison between an image from a good flatbed scanner and a slide and negative converter. Back in 2018, we tested the Wolverine Titan slide converter. And just a quick disclaimer, as far as I know, the version of the Wolverine for sale today is the same as the one we tested back in 2018. I'm not aware that there have been any changes, but I can't be positive. Now, at the time, we chose to test the Wolverine after reading a number of five-star reviews that exclaimed about how easy it was to use. But the truly disappointing results we got compared to what a good flatbed scanner, like the Epson V600, can produce echoed the Wolverine's one- and two-star reviews that looked past ease of use and centered more on the truly disappointing image quality the Wolverine produces. So when we heard that Kodak had come out with a new version of their slide converter, the Kodak Slide and & Scan, and we saw encouraging reviews about quality and not just ease of use, we decided it was worth ordering one to see how Kodak's new offering compared to our previous disappointing slide and negative conversion tests with the Wolverine. The slide and scan is designed to view and digitize three sizes of negative film, as well as digitizing standard 50 millimeter positive slides made from 135, 110, or 126 film. If you have larger format negatives than these sizes, you'll need to look for a different solution, such as using a flatbed scanner. The slide and scan also has settings for either color or black and white film. There are three things I really like about the slide and scan. The first thing I like is that it features a relatively large 5 inch LCD color display that produces a really good view of what's on your slider negative. If all you use the slide and scan for is to review the contents of your trove of slides and negatives, it might be worth the investment just for that purpose. The second thing I like about the slide and scan is that the folks at Kodak really did a good job creating an easy to use and understand set of navigation buttons. The manual provides detailed instructions about how to use the slide and scan, but for those of you who like to just wade in and figure things out by intuition, the slide and scan is pretty easy to navigate and use. The third and most important reason I like the slide and scan is that it actually produces pretty decent results. I captured some images from 35mm color slides and from both 35mm and 110 pocket format color negatives, and while the results weren't quite as good as what I can get from the Epson V600 flatbed scanner, I was still pleasantly surprised at the detail and quality the slide and scan produced. Let's start with this Kodachrome slide of Linda's family from the 1960s from when she was a kid and compare the results between the Epson flatbed the Wolverine Titan, and the Kodak slide and scan. It's a well-lighted photo with good exposure and contrast, so this is the ideal kind of image to capture on a slide and negative converter. As a baseline for comparison, we'll start with the raw scan of the slide from the Epson V600 flatbed scanner. It could use some editing to brighten the image, but if I zoom in, the fine detail is all here, right down to the grain on the negative. So I have all the original information in the image to work with if I want to edit it in Photoshop. 
If you look at the bush behind Linda and her sister, you can see detail in this dark area, and her sister's hair also has detail in the darker areas that could easily be teased out in Photoshop. Also note Linda's freckles and the grain from the Kodachrome slide that shows up here in the Epson V600 scan. Now compare the scan we've just seen from the Epson V600 flatbed scanner with the same image captured by the Wolverine Titan. Even though this is a slide with ideal lighting, the Wolverine struggles to capture any detail at all in the darker areas. The leaves of the plant behind the girls have become an amorphous black mass, and the detail in Linda's sister's hair basically disappears. To make matters worse, Linda's golden hair has purple shadows on the image from the Wolverine. Her freckles are lost completely compared to the original slide, and the faces have taken on a mottled chartreuse cast. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Epson V600 flatbed with the Wolverine Titan. I'll let the results speak for themselves. Now here's the same image captured with the Kodak slide and scan. The image comes out a bit dark on the default setting. I tried capturing it again on the Kodak with the exposure bumped up one notch. That brought out more detail in the dark areas, but it blew out the light areas too much and gave the image an overall washed out appearance, so I stuck with the image captured with the default settings. Looking at the result from the Kodak in more detail, the bush in the background is pretty dark, but there's enough data there to tease out in Photoshop if we wanted to. You can see that Linda's sister's hair contains a lot more pixel information than the Wolverine gave it. Linda's freckles stand out enough to be recognizable. Her golden hair is consistently golden, not purple. And the skin tone on the faces is pretty acceptable. For comparison, here's the Kodak slide and scan next to the Wolverine scan. And here's the Kodak slide and scan next to the Epson V600 flatbed scan. So what can we conclude from this? I'm not at all fond of the results from the Wolverine Titan, but the results from the Kodak slide and scan honestly are pretty good. The scan is completely acceptable just the way it came off the Kodak, and if you have the ability to do a couple quick edits in Photoshop, like I've done here, wow, no one would look at this final result and see anything wanting. It's a very acceptable reproduction of a vintage Kodachrome slide. Is it as good as what I could get from the Epson V600 flatbed? No. Look at how much sharper the image is from the V600. Again, here's the Kodak, and here's the Epson V600. But the result from the Kodak is still good, and maybe good enough depending on your goals. Again, the Kodak slide and scan is a lot faster and easier to use than scanning slides and negatives on a flatbed. So the Kodak could mean the difference between getting the job done and not getting it done at all. Let's look at one more image. This is a scan from the Epson V600 scanner of another Kodachrome slide of Linda and her siblings at some point in the early 1960s, all lined up as a nurse prepares to administer vaccinations. This image was shot with a flash that reflected off the window back at the camera, so the lighting and exposure are terrible. Even so, the Epson V600 still does a great job capturing the fine detail in the dark areas of the photo. If you didn't have the ability to do a retouch in software like Photoshop, you could still easily pass this image on to future generations, and someone could work with it down the road if they wanted to. Here's how the scan from the Epson V600 looks after it's been retouched in Photoshop. So how did the Wolverine do on this slide? Not well at all. Again, in the dark areas, the Wolverine loses all the detail and leaves nothing for Photoshop to work with. Areas like hair that the Epson was able to capture successfully, the Wolverine just turns into the same amorphous black mass we saw in the dark areas of the family portrait we captured earlier on the Wolverine. How about the Kodak slide and scan? Actually, it's not too bad. Again, it's a bad picture with horrible lighting, but the slide and scan was able to pick up enough pixel data in the dark areas that a few quick edits in Photoshop are able to bring out the detail the slide and scan captured. So, are the results on the Kodak slide and scan as good as I could get on a good flatbed scanner? No. This is the edited image captured by the slide and scan, and here's the same image that's been edited from a scan on the Epson V600. Here's the slide and scan again. 
It isn't as good as the scan from the Epson flatbed, but the results are still in the very acceptable range. No one in the future would look at this image and find anything wanting. So you can decide for yourself how much of a perfectionist you want to be with your slides and negatives. If perfect is your goal, you'll want to scan your slides and negatives with a good flatbed scanner or send them out to a professional scanning company like Scan Cafe or Larson Digital. But if good enough is your goal, the Kodak slide and scan might just be your ticket. One more thought. As I already mentioned, the other huge benefit of the slide and scan is how easy it makes it with its nice picture quality and big screen to get a good look at what's on your slides and negatives, even if you just use it to triage which slides and negatives you want to keep and work with, either with your own flatbed scanner or to send out to a scanning service. The slide and scan even comes with an HDMI cable you can connect to a TV or external monitor for a bigger look yet. If you have a lot of slides and negatives, it could be worth having just for that. If you found this helpful, I invite you to click the subscribe button below and also click the bell if you want to be notified when we upload a new video. I'm Charlie Satgast with FamilyHistoryHero.com where we show you how to turn your boxes of photos into easy to share family stories.